It is Thursday, November 10th, 2011. This is another edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Thank you for joining us. We've got um, former sheriff's deputy and expert on the Constitution, very successful as a pro se litigant against tyranny, uh, joining us in studio later. And of course, uh, Eddie Craig. And um, before we get to that, after we cover some of the news, we're going to get into the horrible scandal really illustrating the corruption of powerful institutions and uh, their predisposed um, preset system of covering up horrible crimes. That is coming up as well. So again, we'll look at the Penn State pedophile ring that is beginning to come into view. And we'll also talk with Eddie Craig about the growing police state and ways to counter it in studio coming up. He'll be with us in studio. But first, I want to get into Iran. Uh, three weeks ago, I told you that Israel wants to attack Iran and has gotten the green light from the U.S. government. Uh, but they still have to prepare the public for a scenario that many experts have said could lead to World War III. They first tried to claim that a used car salesman was going to attack the Saudi embassy in D.C. That turned out to be a fraud. Now they've released IAEA reports saying that Iran is studying different types of uh, nuclear power that 100 plus countries are studying, but that it could be used for weapons, so they deserve to be bombed into the Stone Age for that as well. And now the Daily Mail and others are reporting, uh, well, in Parliament they've actually testified, that Israel may launch strike on Iran as soon as next month to prevent development of nuclear weapons. Of course, it came out that the Israeli government and think tanks are basically manipulating the British media. Uh, so I don't know um, what that information is worth. We heard from our government that Iraq had um, fissile material for nuclear weapons and was weeks away from an atomic bomb and had to be invaded because of yellow cake from Niger. And of course, that was a premeditated lie as well. Uh, but it's an incredible uh, distraction in Israel for Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, and it's also a great distraction uh, for Obama. Both men in trouble with their upcoming re-elections. And the Israeli papers are saying that's why this, th this attack may happen, despite the fact that all the attempts at frame-ups have failed, uh, is because the politicians need it as a good distraction. Also, it's been pointed out that roughly 70% of Persians or Iranians don't like their government and that attacking, every major political scientist agrees, attacking Iran will only put the mullahs back in a position of popularity and will make the public unify around their leaders. So this is bad at every level for the people, but it's good for the establishment. It's good for thugs in Iran and thugs here in the United States, England, and Israel. Uh, continuing, getting into economic news, Eurozone debt crisis is spiraling uh, out of control, but it is under control. I've told you for four years, this expanding global derivatives crisis is impossible to pay back. It is a black hole that mathematically cannot be paid back. And we don't owe this money. Over 90% of it in the U.S., Iceland, Ireland, um, England, Greece, now it's spread to a country with roughly 50 times the debt of Greece, uh, they're reporting, uh, Italy, but it's not debt. The banksters, the Madoff, Ken Lay types, have gotten the governments and the finance ministers, who were their alumni, work for them, literally, in every case, to sign on to the fraudulent debt. And now, reportedly, Germany and France have begun talks to break up the Eurozone amid fears that Italy will be too big to rescue. <laughs> of course, they already got their $1.4 trillion, which is leveraged to $5 trillion for the private banksters, and are just creating a mega IMF World Bank system to now bankrupt and suck out the sustenance and the, and the substance and the assanguiation of the individual countries and the Vatican's calling for world government and global currencies, but if you talk about it, the ADL comes out and says you're evil. Oh, look, the Vatican calls for world government. Shut up, that's code for racism, but I, I don't want to be under a world government. North American Union documents, they're merging us. Shut up, it doesn't exist. 
a couple years ago, hey, the government's shipping guns into Mexico. Shut up. I don't care if it's federal documents. Now it's big national news, and they'll probably give CBS a Pulitzer Prize for it when we broke it six years ago and then again two years ago. But whatever. They're legends in their own minds more and more. Um, and there's another report here, how Britain helped stabilize Europe for the past 66 years, and it just gets into all the taxpayer money sucked out of the U.S. and England pumped into Europe. And enough is enough. I mean, Ron Paul wants to shut down our bases. Why do we have bases in Germany? Why do we have bases in all these other European countries? And, and then our military, quote, protects them. I'm tired of paying for it. You're talking about a trillion bucks a year right there. Shut the bases down. This country has nuclear weapons. No one's messing with us unless our own system attacks us as a pretext to get us all hyped up like a swarm of bees to go out and attack their enemy. Our country doesn't exist anymore. It's been taken over by corporate fraudsters, but it was done through fraud. So as soon as we wake up to it, just like the Europeans are, the nightmare ends. As soon as you wake up to the fact it's a fraud and that it's a scam, you don't have to be under their authority anymore. It's universal law. God-given rights, whatever you want to call it, organic law. I'm not your slave. I don't have to pay taxes for derivatives that banksters created. Now, continuing with some very interesting news, Natural News reports, and they have links to all the mainstream articles on this, Baxter, the same company that produced um, you know, deadly um, vaccines that killed ferrets uh, in the test, uh, the same company that unleashed tainted avian flu vaccines has recalled 300,000 flu vaccines for serious adverse reactions. And, 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 you know, I see these recalls every few months by big companies, but then I see national news going, there's conspiracy theorists that say there's been recalls and, and uh, health problems. On and on and on with this bull. And then I've got all the Canadian and British studies and European studies that show that three years ago, the H1N1 shot doubled your chances of getting the next year's flu. It, it, it actually destroys your immune system. And then they admitted that, what is it, 1.6% of the time, do they actually predict the next year's flu with the shot? I mean, this is beyond worthless. You notice cancer rates have basically tripled in the last 30 years in the United States. We have the highest rate of every cancer you can list. And then every other country, according to how many vaccines they take, is right in line. And the more GMO you've got, the more pesticide you've got, the more cancer you have. I mean, cancer's like getting a cold now. Alzheimer's is connected. Just search the term, Alzheimer's connected to shots. If a senior's had three or more flu shots within a decade, it doubles their chances of Alzheimer's. Hell, even the BBC admits that. But, and by the way, that's on all the inserts. But the nightly news never tells you because half their sponsors are big pharma. So that's an interesting report. Continuing, uh, there's an article in Infowars.com. Gardasil victims take legal action against Merck over miscarriage and deadly reactions, including deaths. But that's, they knew they had a deadly vaccine four years ago in the trials. After the deaths in the trials and all the adverse reactions and the Guillain-Barre and the narcolepsy and the rest of it, and remember, 2% of adverse reactions get reported. Look at that number. It's massively bigger than that, and that's huge. Uh, they then went to Rick Perry, the one political horror they could find, because if a state governor says, I'm putting on the list of recommended, he lied and said it was the law. That, 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 that hoax got exposed. Then that triggers federal vaccine protection of liability, and the government has to secretly in the vaccine damage fund, pay it out to the families. They don't let it go to court because the federal courts have been turned into a joke, but still, so you don't go postal on them, they quietly just pay out taxpayer money. God, billions a year here. Oh, sorry, sorry, your kid's dead. I'm oh, sorry, the brain damage here. Here's just cash, 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 cash. So, so the vaccine makers go, this stuff's killing people. Well, we'll just have government recommend it, and then that kicks in because it's mandated. That, that kicks in uh, vaccine protection. So it, it, it's a wonderful scam. Uh, but people are now suing over this. Unfortunately, because Perry triggered government mandate, it'll now give them vaccine protection, and taxpayers will pay for all the dead and maimed children, and all the dead babies, and all the miscarriages, and all the other uh, relish that the globalists enjoy. I mean, this is all part of their sacrament. But it's okay. I have a little uh, thing I want to show you here. We get this type of stuff in the mail all the time. 
And driving around town, I just see signs everywhere saying, get your flu shot. I mean, I've, I've gone to get a prescription for one of my children who had an eye infection. The woman wouldn't shut up about how I needed a flu shot. And we'll come to your office and give you shots. We got flu shot parties. And I said to the pharmacist or pharmacist assistants, I said, you got a computer over there? I said, type in um, flu shot vaccine doubles your chances of getting the next year's flu. It lowers your immunity. Or, or you know, you're a pharmacist assistant. Have you read the insert? And I don't want narcolepsy. I, I, I just, you know, plus it doesn't ever really protect you. They never guess the right flu. I mean, I believe in inoculation. And I know it's a real science, 400 years old, but it always causes its own set of problems. And I go, are you aware that polio programs worldwide have caused more polio than actually would have naturally occurred? I, I sh type in uh, children given polio from the shots. And they just go, oh, sorry, move on, move on. I'm then shut up and give me the damn eye drop antibiotic, okay? I don't need to be lectured by you, a dumbass. Okay, I live the real documents. Sorry, sorry. Uh, here we have uh, the flu care, Texas Plus HMO. I mean, you with these HMOs can barely get basic dental care or whatever you need with many of these companies. I don't know about this company, they may be great. But the point is they're pushing, oh, here's your card, uh, we want you to go out and get it because they get all sorts of government money, many of these insurance companies, for doing this. Why are they pushing it on you? Why is Mexico getting U.S. and World Bank and, and HMO funding and World Health Organization funding to inject three shots that's over $800 of Gardasil of every Mexican girl in Mexico? I'll tell you why. Because when you read the studies, this stuff also reduces fertility. Oh, but you're not going to hear that from Mecha and La Raza and all these groups because they're bought and paid for by the big banks. They'll tell you all day, fly a Mexican flag, blah, 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 so you feel like the group supports you. But at the end of the day, they're not supporting you with somebody shooting you up with something that will sterilize your ass. Excuse me. I know it's a family show. I apologize. Look into it. Find out. Now they want to inject all American boys. They've already hurt and maimed and God knows done what with 18 million American girls. Now they're moving on to other people. Folks, how many times has the UN been caught adding sterilants to vaccines? Many times we've shown it here. The Rockefeller Foundation documents we've shown about sterilizing people through the vaccines. Wake up, wake up. In fact, people won't believe it. I know we're going to Penn State scandal in a minute, but minimize that. Type in uh, flu shots, Alzheimer's. And it, it, they'll tell you, three flu shots in a decade doubles the chance of Alzheimer's. You can look it up, CNN, you name it. There's been major studies done on it, and it just makes me angry that they admit the flu shot doesn't even ever accurately predict what it's going to mutate into the next year, and then it doesn't protect you, and these companies are given total liability protection by the government, and so there's all sorts of additives and toxins and bacteria and viruses in it. I mean, folks, you need to research this. I've got three children. And I did a lot of research, even though I already knew this 10 years ago when we had our first child, to make sure before I didn't vaccinate him, I was right. And it just, I, it was overwhelming how bad the evidence. And in the 10 years, more and more comes out. I'm sure if we had really ethical companies and they did proper research and weren't given liability protection, there's probably something to vaccines and uh, giving people artificial immunity. But it's connected to then increasing cancer when you don't let your body fight things itself. But the fact that we got a bunch of eugenicists calling for population control and openly saying use vaccines to control us and reduce our fertility, and then you catch them doing it. I, I mean, the, this is a government shooting black men up with syphilis for 50 years. I mean, these people can't be trusted. It's, it's, it's very simple. It's kind of like a milkman's delivering milk to your house in the 50s, and you're like, well, why don't you trust the milkman? Well, if they had a spree of people putting cyanide in the milk being delivered, crazy milkmen, you'd say, it's not that I'm against milk, but th these are crazy milkmen. I mean, see what I'm saying? I mean, this is just common sense here. Okay, I want to get into this report because it was a uh, U.S. News and uh, World Report article today. U.S. tourism lost decade cost 500,000 jobs. And the article is really a propaganda piece because other major studies by the Restaurant Association, the Hotel Association, the theme park groups that, com that have been complaining in the last year, they first estimated in the first five years after 9-11 a $20 billion, 
however many zeros that is, a year drop is 20. Now they estimate a 40 billion a year, okay? So however many zeros. So, so all of this is going on, and they're talking about 500,000 jobs in 10 years in tourism alone. Folks, people say, well, the flights are still full. What do you mean it's hurt the airlines? Yeah, they've cut, they've cut the number of flights. We're getting closer and closer to nationalized air travel, which is what the few big insiders like anyways. The few that got the $25 billion bailout right after 9-11 from the government to go along with the TSA general groping, all of it. This is a consolidation plan. But you've had the big associations come out and say, this is killing us. $40 billion a year, and it's because I've talked to Europeans. I've talked to a lot of other people that have talked to them and others. They don't want to come here and have their genitals grabbed, be treated like criminals, like they're being marched into a FEMA camp when they come here to vacation or see the Grand Canyon. So they're just not coming here. I talked to my reporter, Paul Watson, who goes to China a few times a year because his wife's Chinese. Communist China is a police state, but there's no, no security. They just check your name, and they've already run your background when you go to the airport. This is all about training us to be prisoners in America. Nothing to do with security, and it's killing the country. You don't know why we're going into a depression? This is, uh, this is part of it. Now, I want to get to bumbling Rick Perry. Um, Ron Paul wants to get rid of five agencies. Rick Perry tries to copy him to be popular. Uh, and uh, before we get to that, let's go to the poll first. Before we get to the Ron Paul uh, copying creature, Rick Perry having a, having a flu vaccine moment, look at this poll that CNBC went with and every other network that's had polls, Bloomberg, ABC, Fox, they've all done it. Ron Paul always wins the poll and he always wins the straw poll, the scientific poll, and then they always just don't mention him as John Stewart pointed out. He can be in second place, they don't mention second place. He can be in first place, they don't mention it. He can be in third place. So they showed this last night, he had 66% of the votes, he just won the Illinois straw poll, he's won California, you name it, and they just pulled it. Now, here is a few minutes after they showed their poll results, same time stamp, same article, and you look at it over here, this is live right now, and you notice it's a bunch of ads over there on the right-hand side and they don't show it. Just go ahead and scroll, scroll down for them. It's nowhere there, they removed it. That is the standard playbook. Ron Paul wins the poll, they put him up, he's removed. He wins a straw poll, they don't mention it. He gets second place in a scientific poll. They mention first, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. They'll mention people with a one percentage, but they don't mention Ron Paul because they don't want you to think he's viable. They've done scientific studies we've covered where he gets the least amount of time in the debates. And when they do cover him, it's negative to say he can't win. They talk to you like you're an idiot. Uh, let's go ahead and go to Rick Perry, uh, the Al Gore, former chief of staff in Texas, and uh, the guy that doubled the size of state government in the last, and, and the taxes in the last uh, 10 years. Uh, the teleprompter reader, just like Obama, doesn't do too well and has a moment. He's having more and more of these. So I, I don't know if they replaced him with a new zombie or what, but here it is. And I will tell you, it's three agencies of government when I get there that are gone. Commerce, education, and the, uh, uh, what's the third one there? Let's see. <laughs> Oh, five. Okay, so commerce, education, and uh, the um, um, uh, EPA. EPA. There you go. No, okay. Let's stop. Let's stop deposition. Seriously. Is EPA the one you were talking about? Or? No, sir. No, sir. We were talking about the um, agencies of government. EPA needs to be rebuilt. But There's you no can't. Doubt about but you that. can't name the third one. The third agency of government. Yeah. I would. I would do away with the education. Uh, the uh, <laughs> commerce. I, I, commerce, and let's see, I can't, the third one I can't, sorry, <laughs> oops. <laughs> it's five! <laughs> yeah, the 76-year-old man's got a lot better brain than you, doesn't he? Because he's not visiting the transvestite clubs. Uh, that's in his purchase stuff. That's in his campaign stuff. He's the one dumb enough to to use that as a business meeting for the governor's office in Florida, whatever he's doing over there. And hey, Perry, that's your issue. Just don't lecture me all day about your morals. And 
you're praying to make it rain in Texas. The drought got worse after you did that. I don't think God likes uh, you uh, mocking him. I think Perry's a curse on Texas. I want to say that. He says he blessed Texas. Whatever, Perry. Whatever. But uh, now moving right along to some really serious issues that we need to get into. On Monday, I came out and I said, I'm not going to comment on the Penn State situation yet, but I said, I, I, my first look at this, my gut reaction is it's like the Texas Youth Commission, where the Texas Rangers busted it. They found out at, at juvenile facilities all over the state from ages 6 to up to uh, 17 that there was a cover-up and that they were having local officials, you know, muckety-mucks, bigwigs come in and rape little kids. And they'd also have gladiatorial fights that came out. And when the head of the state police wouldn't call off these investigations, the legislature came in and demanded he be removed. And they created a commission to basically whitewash the whole thing. I mean, this makes Penn State, I mean, this guy, you know, had witnesses coming in on him reportedly raping kids in the showers. They were doing this because they think they can't be caught. And now it's coming out, uh, they're reporting uh, that uh, people are saying that donors were going in. That's exactly what was going on with politicos reportedly. And the Texas Rangers tried to stop it. I mean, to their credit, uh, they went up against the politicos. The politicos said, look, the head of the DPS that commands you for letting this happen, he's gone. We're gonna rape as many children as we want. And now the rape rooms continue. Now, again, they're calling this rumors, but I've got the timeline. Back in 94, the police were called. They knew about this the whole time, and it went on and on and on. And believe me, if uh, this uh, individual who's now been arrested, this, this coach who was being protected, if he was raping children there in a quasi-public area at the field house in the showers, this is what these type of psychopaths do. It's all about the, the exercise in a quasi-public place to flaunt it in our face. That's part of their enjoyment. If you study the criminology of these uh, worms, these knuckle-dragging pus creatures, these, uh, these pit demons. But let's go ahead and go to a local news clip uh, where they're discussing this. This is now broken as a big national story. A rumor, and I can give you something I think might happen. Okay. Give us both. Give us both. Okay. I, I hear there's a rumor that there will be a more shocking development from the Second Mile Foundation. And hold on to your stomachs, boys. This is gross. I will... You know, I, I'll use the only language I can, that Jerry Sandusky and, and Second Mile were pimping out young boys to rich donors. Now, that's what I said on Monday, because, well, we're going to go through some of this evidence, then cut to a clip of one of our documentary films here in a moment. But that's from our study, what I always run into. I mean, when I first got involved in, 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 in radio and TV 17 years ago, this had never even crossed my mind. And then you just learn that this is par for the course. This is the guild, the group that is involved in all of this, and that the elites go and actually participate in this, even if they don't like it, because the pedophile rings don't trust you till you do this. And regardless what you want to say about the coach, the president, they knew about this for 15, 16, 17, 18 years, at least 18 years. The police knew about it for 18 years. The media knew about it for 18 years. It's now coming out. An example of how this type of cancerous corruption can grow, just like the Texas Youth Commission. And uh, you get to this Second Mile Foundation. Uh, we've got a graphic of that. There's the uh, timeline of it going back to 1994, 18 years uh, when uh, these reports began. And when people started, you know, catching this type of activity going on, and these people just start thinking they can do it with impunity. You know, at first it's something they do in the basement. And, and you talk about the Second Mile Foundation, you know, oh, this is helping disadvantaged kids. You know, it's always the same. How many times have you seen Homeland Security deputy directors that run children's charities or... Or uh, a few years ago, uh, you know, that congressman who ran the programs in Congress for sex abuse children. And then he's going after the pages. Uh, the, or in Florida, where the three heads of CPS were caught having sex with kids, and, and, and they were already convicted previously. They hire pedophiles. We're facing pot-bellied pedophiles. And that's why they like demonizing us, groping our genitals at TSA, teaching sex education to five-year-olds in public school. 
five-year-olds aren't even thinking about sex, and they're teaching them about heterosexual, gay sex, everything you can imagine, putting it in their mind. Th this is just assaulting us because a normal person's into enchiladas and fishing and you know their wife and just normal stuff. I never get sick of just normal life. Sickos, it's always got to be something new. Hitler was into war and death. Other people are into raping children. I mean, it's, these are screwed up people. And so you wonder why they do all this stuff. Because they're a bunch of scum. And I'm telling you, large portions of that school hierarchy, because in most big ones they are, they're pedophile rings. We're going to get into that evidence in a minute. But this second mile group, it's always the same. Who would suspect a children's group doing this? Who would suspect the Vatican, the Boy Scouts, over and over again? And I'm not saying the Boy Scouts are bad. This is where the predators go. Because then once it's a big organization, it's got power, and nobody's going to want to blow the whistle because it's going to damage people. You know, 5,000 child molesters, the U.S., Scout movement's guilty secret, the ongoing cover-up. Meanwhile, the DA who refused to ever indict in 94, 2000, 2002, the grand jury's told no bill, even though they had total evidence of this going on. These people would deliver their kids to this to go meet the coach. And boy, it was, it was you know, and reportedly the donors, and it was gang rape. I mean, it was boy rape all the way, New World Order. He went missing in 2005. Wonder if he's wearing cement shoes after he helped cover stuff up. We know he killed the investigations. I mean, they're talking about kids rioting because the, the coach is fired. He is an accomplice because he knew about this over a decade ago. He deserved to spend the rest of his miserable crone monster. He looks like a, uh, you know, the portrait of Dorian Gay, uh, Gray or something. It's ju just incredible. So you got the DA, you know, wearing cement shoes, probably. Uh, let's go ahead and play. L let's go back and and since you had that article up, let's show the youth out there uh, rioting, tumping over vehicles, attacking police because they're God. What they exist for, the demonic hunchback creature that covered this up uh, got fired. Now these young people are all making themselves basically accomplices to a degenerate pedophile ring. And again, even if the, if the head coach wasn't involved in it, the point is he knew about it, so that makes him an accomplice. Okay? I walk into some uh, public shower or field house shower and somebody's raping a kid. I mean, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to beat the living snot out of them. That's not because I'm some tough guy. Instantly, it's clobbering in time. And see, that's why we're such slaves. The fact that I'm seen as a weirdo because I want to attack child molesters, and my instinct is to literally stomp their guts out. I'm bad because I have an instinct to defend the, the youth of our species, as any animal does. You mess with some raccoon in your backyard, push it away from the dog food, it won't get mad. You go over to its little baby that's sitting behind, the raccoon will attack you. Raccoons will kill large dogs. They'll chew their throats out. They'll get them in water and push their heads in because you're messing with their baby. They've taken our basic instinct. I mean, I'm telling you right now, I could beat the living hell out of 20 pedophiles right now. Line up these pot belly pieces of crap. I'm going to tear their jaws off their heads. I'm going to ram their noses off. I'm going to knock their teeth out, okay? That's a normal, good, healthy instinct. Instead, people walk in, see this reportedly over and over again, and don't do jack squat. Our basic survival instinct has been eradicated. All right, let's go to the Washington Times. I can go on for 10 hours here. Homosexual prostitution inquiry ensnares v VIPs with Reagan Bush. Call boys took midnight tour of the White House. Then it happened again with Jeff Gannon, the, the White House press corps, the male madam under George W. Bush. Remember that? The hundreds of call, call boys visiting. Barney Frank, underage call boys out of his house. Remember all that? It goes on and on. Remember the New York Post? Chad Savage and others flown into Bohemian Grove? to be valets of the world leaders and the Christian conservative leaders. I mean, again, this is all about compromising them. Nixon, it's coming up in the clip, told Harper's, you know, that he had to basically go to this to be part of the establishment, and he hated it. Again, they just think up the worst crap they can, make you wallow in it, and they go, well, now we can trust you. It's kind of like the mafia says you got to kill somebody, you know, before you're a made man. You got to be Sicilian. You got to be kill somebody. Well, then people go all, all, all up that. Uh, you want to join uh, this Mexican mafia group? You got to you got to go kill an innocent old person. And other groups are like, well, we'll outdo that. The Russian mafia. Some groups say you got to kill a little kid. I mean, that's all this is. It's just a bunch of mafia crap. 
and I'm sick of you scum. You're a bunch of pot-bellied trash, and it's time you be brought down. And I see you, and I know what you are. All right, let's get, I don't know what it is. I've just seen CPS and pedophile groups. I've covered them. I've watched them. And it's, it's always like a nilly pot belly. Uh, and I mean, it's just like, oh, there you are. You're a maggot demon. They're like, I have, I have the government on my side. <laughs> we'll get your guns. I mean, you know, that's who these people are. And you put up with them. They're a bunch of vampires. Uh, so we went over a lot of that. I have another report here. Um, this is out of MSNBC, mental health worker who reported child porn fired. We're not allowed to go public unless actual child abuse is observed. And now they've got this thing where the government's only recruiting pedophiles in many levels, so they're now allowed to have the child porn. Anybody that reports it is fired. Uh, so we've uh, got that report. Uh, let's go ahead and again, we have the audio of the youth rioting because they're God, the uh, child, uh, the, the alleged child abuse uh, helper. But again, there's a huge cover up of this. Witnesses, it's clear it went on. It, it, uh, and, it, and it fits the same MO. It doesn't matter. We have to play it with audio. I played it on the radio today. Uh, we're going to go ahead now and go to this clip from Jason Burmas. He directed it. I produced it. Invisible Empire. It's available on DVD, getting into the history of the elite, their mindset, their worldviews, knowing your enemy. We also have another deal where you can get 18 of my films on DVD for $99.95. No one offers 18 films for that. Um, we're basically getting this out there after production costs and everything at cost, ninety nine ninety five because I know everything's falling apart right now. The, you can take care of all your holiday Christmas shopping right now. Eighteen films, give them to your friends and family, ninety nine ninety five, a two hundred and fifty nine dollar discount off the three hundred fifty nine dollar regular price. That's all available right now at infowars.com or call eight 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 two five three three one three nine. Here's a segment from Jason Burmes' Invisible Empire that I hope you get and show at your church and get out to folks that deals with the Franklin cover-up uh, and more. Uh, this is a key information that's been well-documented, and it just shows exactly the type of evil demons that are running our society. And you ignore this at your own peril. Then we'll come back with a former Nacogdoches Sheriff's Deputy and Patriot Crusader winning a lot of cases against uh, local uh, Constitution criminals, uh, folks violating the Constitution. Eddie Craig, it's InfoWars Nightly News. Stay with us. Why are Christian conservatives such as the Bushes and Newt Gingrich attending the Grove? And I, I recognize I'm not going to be invited to Renaissance Weekend or that Bohemian deal where Newt, Rush, and Dick all sit in a teepee naked beating on tom-toms. <laughs> Why does the media barely mention the Grove? Because many of them are in attendance. Late political cartoonist Phil Frank of the San Francisco Chronicle draws a reporter thinking about his loyalties to Bohemian Grove as he takes notes for a story. Stories about what happens in these redwoods are hard to come by. A campground statue reminds Bohemians to keep their mouths shut about the Grove. Many world events have been shaped at the Grove, including the creation of the atomic bomb. Discussions at the Grove in the 1930s helped lead to the development of nuclear power and the atomic bomb. Every Republican president since Calvin Coolidge has been a member, as well as many Democrats, including Jimmy Carter. If you look at the membership lists of the Bohemian Grove and the Council on Foreign Relations, the Bilderberg Group, a lot of the key level people are overlapping and are involved in, in numerous groups. In addition to pagan rituals that take place there, this all-male club also deals with darker themes through the plays Montezuma, which feature Aztec human sacrifice, and Faust, which feature Mephisto. Some of these plays are disturbingly flamboyant. Many of the elitists have a penchant for cross-dressing and singing show tunes. Perhaps that is why much of the all-male staff also happen to be homosexuals. Well, each year, uh, many of them seem to have a stunt uh, or try to come up with a stunt. Last year, 1980, uh, the popular button was uh, Free the Fortune 500. Bohemian Grove that I attend, one time at a time, it is the most faggot goddamn thing you will ever, ever imagine. In 2004, the New York Post reported that gay porn star Chad Savage would be servicing moguls at the Bohemian Grove. In recent years, several politicians have been outed in scandals, including Senator Larry Craig, who tried to solicit sex from an undercover officer in 2007. Even more shocking, it was revealed in 2004 that right-wing blogger James Guckert, who had unprecedented access to the White House during the Iraq War, was actually Jeff Gannon, a madam and male prostitute for MilitaryStuds.com. During his two years writing for GOP USA and Talon News, 
Gannon officially made over 200 appearances at the White House. Oddly enough, over two dozen of these visits would take place when there were no scheduled briefings. He failed to check in or out with the Secret Service on many other occasions, coming and going as he pleased. These type of activities are not new to the White House. In 1989, headlines involving call boys in the White House rocked the cover of the Washington Times. The Washington Times reported today that unidentified White House aides in the Carter, Reagan, and Bush administrations now are being investigated for using the services of a call boy ring. The paper reports that two of the male prostitutes were given a late night tour of the White House last year. Hundreds of credit card receipts obtained by the Washington Times confirmed that its clients were key officials of the Reagan and Bush administrations, military officers, congressional aides, and U.S. and foreign businessmen with close social ties to Washington's political elite. This ring extended beyond the White House and into Congressman Barney Frank's bedroom. Barney Frank, one of two openly homosexual members of Congress, acknowledged having used a male prostitute whom he then hired as a personal employee. The man had keys to Frank's basement apartment on Capitol Hill. Frank paid him approximately $20,000 out of his own pocket to be his housekeeper and driver. But as first reported in today's Washington Times, the man was on probation for sex crimes and a drug conviction. And he ran a prostitution business out of Frank's home. Although Frank tried to claim ignorance, Stephen Gobi, the prostitute in question, claimed that Frank was completely aware of what was going on and was even receiving free and discounted sexual services. The fix seemed to be in. Frank was threatening members of Congress to remain silent prior to being exposed in this sex ring. Massachusetts Democrat Barney Frank, a homosexual, threatened to expose fellow congressmen he knew to be gay unless they stopped spreading rumors. Questions stopped and Frank walked away with a slap on the wrist. Some members of the Ethics Committee were disgusted. Do we tolerate, do we condone a member of this body who knowingly permits a house of prostitution to be operated out of his residence. You have just heard one of the most edited, selective garbage that has ever been put forth, in my opinion, in this house. Again, we see people of the highest levels of power involved in the most repulsive and decadent of crimes. They couldn't care less about the code of conduct that's taught in all major religions about treating others the way that you want to be treated. And then they masquerade, they put this false front on that they're like everybody else because your average person wants to do right, believes in some sort of a karma, believes in some sort of a divine uh, justice in the universe. And so these people need to put on this front that they're like the average Joe in middle America, that they go to church every once in a while, and that they believe in an afterlife and a divine justice. And so they have to put on this front that they're like everybody else in order to get elected and to be accepted and to not have people look at them suspiciously because if somebody goes around and openly admits that they were an atheist or that they were of some obscure religion, uh, people aren't going to throw their support behind them as much and they're not going to trust them as easily. The reality of this behavior is never revealed to the public as the media keeps any revelations quiet. Unfortunately, these type of activities continue to this day. Florida Congressman Mark Foley chaired the House Caucus on Missing and Exploited Children and went on television praising Chris Hansen's To Catch a Predator series. The Dateline piece has probably done more than any law we can create. Foley was later caught attempting to have sexual relations with numerous underage pages. Congressman Mark Foley, the man who championed the Child Protection Act of 2006, resigned after inappropriate emails and instant messages surfaced that he sent to former congressional pages. Once more, no charges were even filed. Foley himself has checked into rehab. No one has been charged with any crime. The predator class acts like Roman emperors, indulging in excess that includes sex with young boys, while portraying themselves as men of the Lord. The insanity is that we have allowed an interwoven elite criminal class to rule over us while posing as the saviors of the planet. We have learned they will stop at nothing to achieve their goals and are not held accountable for their crimes. They prey on the system rather than protect it. This is not a new world order of peace and prosperity. It is not a world government to save the earth. During difficult times, we must remain ever vigilant against seemingly positive solutions imposed to suit their aim. If you believe in this information and want to support its 
viral spread. Go to the InfoWars store at InfoWars.com. We've got the new G.I. Joe InfoWars t-shirts. We've got the incredible ProPure gravity-fed filters available at InfoWars.com in the store. We've got a new DVD, Scientists Under Attack, the Don't Tread on Me flag. We've got all sorts of different bumper stickers to help spread the rebellion virally. It's all there, wristbands, citizen rule books in every order. Order online at InfoWars.com today. The water filters, the canteens, it's all there. InfoWars.com. And we are back. It's InfoWars Nightly News on this November 10th, Thursday edition. Uh, I wanted to have fellow Austinite and patriot Eddie Craig in studio because in the last few years, I've listened to his local radio show that can also be heard on the internet and learned a lot from it. I've studied the law uh, quite a bit and uh, learned about common law, Bill of Rights, Constitution. Uh, I've studied the court cases that uh, traveling, uh, um, locomotion is not a privilege, it's a right. Um, I've learned about the Fourth Amendment, you name it. But when I listen to Eddie Craig, he can teach us so much more, uh, but especially about state laws and traffic violations and what this whole police state's doing. And Eddie woke up similarly the way I did. When I was in high school, I saw police dealing drugs in Dallas and um, exposed it and was threatened. Eddie is an Nacogdoches uh, sheriff's deputy, saw a lot of corruption, things missing from the drug locker, and spoke out against it, and also revenue generation, and they came after him. So uh, he'll be a guest from time to time here because he does live in Austin. But I thought in this uh, short interview tonight on InfoWars Nightly News, we'd uh, get him to just basically give you a snapshot of who he is and his awakening, and then really break down uh, what's happened in our society, this road to tyranny. What is tyranny? So, Eddie, thanks for being here with us uh, tonight. First off, spend a few minutes telling your story from the inside, inside a sheriff's department and watching the local police department, and then expand out into uh, how you would, in layman's terms, describe the process of going from a free society into an oppressive, tyrannical society. Because earlier, when we were standing around the water cooler after the radio, uh, you had a good uh, uh, parable to basically describe that to people. All right. Uh, well, uh, I'm originally uh, an active duty Air Force member. I spent 14 years active duty in the Air Force. Uh, that's when I got my first real exposure to the way government actually operates from the inside. Uh, when I got out of that, uh, I actually became a Nacogdoches Sheriff's Deputy. I worked inside the county jail. I worked with other individuals. I've worked with the local police officers there. And the people that I worked with, for the most part, were honest, hardworking people. They didn't really understand everything that was going on. They didn't even understand the laws associated with their job. And I'm one of these type of people that I don't settle for being second best at something. Uh, I may be second best, but it won't be because I settle for it. So I spent a lot of my time reading and studying the actual statutes that we were expected to enforce. I was also doing it for the purpose of when I was working inside the jail, when these inmates would be brought in and booked, I wanted to know with relative certainty what the actual offense was they were being charged with and so on and so forth just for my own satisfaction. And it came to my attention that a lot of the people that were being brought in for things like public intoxication, traffic citation arrests and so on and so forth were being illegally brought into jail under false pretenses by both the Sheriff's Department, the DPS, and the local municipal police department there in Nacogdoches where I live. And, or did live before I came to Austin. But the more I noticed this, the more I started asking questions about it. And the real thing that got me out of the job there, per se, was by I actually caught one of my supervisors uh, misusing public funds and property. He was actually doing his resume for one of the larger police departments in Dallas using county property. He was using the county booking camera, the county film supply, and basically everything to send out all these huge, fancy, picturesque resumes of himself to all these big municipalities because he wanted to get out of the small towns. Was he, he also was, stealing the time? Yes, he was. He was doing all this on the time when he should be working. He's in there doing this for his own personal business. And then he crashed the booking computer and asked me to help him fix it, which I didn't so do. that's dereliction of duty. It's 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 stealing time and resources. Embezzlement is what it is, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, and it's actually uh, misuse of public funds and property. 
And when he saw that I understood what had happened and how it had happened, he sent me home early off of my shift, and then he actually went to our immediate supervisors the next morning and reported that I was the one that had caused the booking computer crash, even though I hadn't been the one that was on it. And when I tried to bring up the fact that it was this individual that had caused this problem and what he was doing in the interim, uh, that's when things, they threatened me with jail and everything else if I wouldn't leave. So the cover-up kicked in. And, of course, this is a microcosm of, say, Penn State, where for 18 years they've been covering it up and going after the police officers and people that tried to expose it. And, and, it's a, and that's a microcosm of the big mega banks controlling all the regulators and persecuting people at the SEC that blew the whistle. I mean, it's, it's, I guess, a system of where you went after something relatively petty, but they then tried to persecute you, making it something bigger, because undoubtedly there was more going on above that. Well, they compounded it with the fact that I'd bring up these other issues where these, I believe these arrests were being done illegally, which of course affects the revenue generation, especially on the traffic citation side. Uh, most of these arrests that were occurring were on a citation basis, and each one of those citations is worth X amount of dollars in revenue to the city. Uh, basically, the laws of Texas are set up where a city gets to keep up to 50% of the amount of money collected in these fines and fees, while the other 50% goes to the state. So you can honestly say that the municipalities and the counties, their revenue generation is sanctioned by the state because it's a profit-sharing program. So the state won't interfere with it unless the individual causes such a stink as to make them have to look twice at the issues. That's where I come into play. My job is to educate people on what the actual law is. Here's what you're being told. Here's what it actually says. Here's how they're misusing it against you in order to commit fraud and to steal. They're basically taxing the people of Texas untold millions of dollars a year in fines and fees that don't even apply to us, that they should never have been allowed to apply to us. And compounded with these other things, yeah, that's one of the reasons they don't really like me over in that part of Texas anymore. That and the fact that I also went directly after the state comptroller's office for illegally forcing small, unincorporated businesses to collect sales tax. Uh, basically, there's no law in Texas that requires an unincorporated business to collect sales tax on behalf of the state. The state does not pay the individual to do it. The state does not in any way compensate them for doing it. Basically, they're forcing you into indentured servitude as their unpaid tax collector. It's on your dime that you have to take the time to accumulate the money, prepare the reports, file the reports, and pay in the money, and that's all out of your pocket, and the state doesn't compensate you in any way for it. That, in my book, is indentured servitude. When I challenge the state on this, that's when they begin raiding my business under false pretenses, SWAT style. They actually raided my computer repair service business three separate times at gunpoint. You would think they were raiding one of the largest drug labs in all of Texas the way they came in there. there was and again, this is the law. Uh, you were telling me earlier about the case here in Austin that they've now won with these golf carts yes. that drive people around uh, for no money but a tip if they want to give it. And, 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 and the, the police had no statute to be even giving them tickets. They've now been defeated in court, but they won't run that on the news. But, but we're going to get to that in a moment. Define for people the process of going from liberty to tyranny and how it takes place? Well, uh, it takes place over time. If they actually tried to do it all at once, the people would see it for what it is and rise up against it. That much I honestly believe. But over generations, what they've done, they have slowly indoctrinated us into accepting this is the way things are. They teach it to our kids in school. They teach it to the teenagers in college. Uh, they teach it to the adults now that have grown from that generation on up and it's been a slow over time type of thing and we've come to accept it where now uh, we've got the public servants have now tried to convert our society of being from their attitude of being a servant into their attitude of being the master of the people they've completely done a role reversal on the way our public was set up um, the analogy I believe I gave you uh, in relation to this was when a, a rancher fails to control the coyote population on his ranch, he will see a direct inverse proportion in population to his livestock to the increase in population of the predatory base. So if he fails to keep that predatory base culled down, 
then he loses money, he loses control of his property, and you know he eventually gets done in by that. And what we've got now is the state, instead of becoming the servant and protecting the rights of the people as we set them up, they have become the predator. And we, the people, are not keeping that predatory base minimized. And that's what the not. founders warned us about. Exactly. It's common sense. It happens in every culture. And every form of classical tyranny is now being set up. But they've gone further, adding all this high-tech grid to it. And, and now in all these training manuals that good police have sent us that have made national news, they say, returning veterans of the enemy, gun owners, libertarians, people that talk about the Constitution, uh, these common law people, the, these pro se litigants, these libertarians, well, we're the real Americans. I mean, we are the people who are following what the Republic was set up for that, cr that produced all this wealth and freedom and private property. And we've literally got this occupational foreign corporate takeover, the New World Order, looting and stealing everything now publicly. And then they've gone and brainwashed the cops and told them these are the bad guys. Exactly. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, it's incredible. And now it's coming to a head. But we've got a lot of new viewers out there. Uh, millions, uh, you know, end up watching this one way or another, these shows. We have the PrisonPlanet.tv viewers, but then it goes out later to YouTube and all the other channels. And, and a lot of times I see comments in the videos like, well, the cops have got to spy on you without a warrant because they want to get the bad guys. But meanwhile, the government's caught shipping guns into Mexico, drugs back in, the troops grow the opium in Afghanistan. I, I mean, it's, it's so corrupt, I can't even describe it. And, and they're actually, the, the corruption's taking over now where where if you're against the evil, you're bad. They openly say, you know, you're evil because you can see. Uh, you've got the they live sunglasses on. But, but for the lay folks out there, you know, citing court cases, whatever, give people four or five examples of the way it is under common law, constitution, and in the last hundred years, the way it's been put into the opposite inverse position. Well, under the original concept of the constitution, uh, the people themselves were in charge and basically you and I could only go to each other in court if you or I could prove the other had committed them a harm. Same thing with a criminal act. There was a time when there had to be a victim to be a crime. Now we have all multitudes of crimes that have no victim. The differentiation in these are the malum in se crimes, which are crimes that are crimes in and of themselves, such as murder, for instance. That's a crime against humanity in and of itself. Then you have uh, the traffic citations, where there is no victim, there is no one harmed, and yet a crime has been committed. Some states, they're civil, but here in Texas, they are criminal actions. Now, as far as what that goes, there's lots of things that these statutes they govern us under have attempted to do to circumvent our constitutional protections. For instance, Texas law is written into the Transportation Code with the presumption that you have waived all of your rights. The, uh, for instance, Chapter 601, where you have to deal with the financial responsibility requirements, the language in that very specifically states the burden of proof to prove their innocence is now on the accused. They don't have to prove you're guilty. They have already presumed by statute you are, in fact, guilty as charged. So this runs directly 180 degrees, according to all Absolutely. basic English, Anglo-Saxon, common law, the Constitution, Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence. People claim they're these red-blooded Americans. Yeah, take people's rights. It's red-blooded. No, it's the opposite. That's correct. Uh, 601.053, Texas Transportation Code will spell that out plainly. Now that is completely inverse to the way it's supposed to work. Uh, the Code of Criminal Procedure says very clearly, an individual's presumption of innocence shall never be tarnished by the state. It cannot be tarnished, yet the statute specifically does that. It also states in the Code of Criminal Procedure that every person is presumed innocent until proven guilty. The statutes in the Transportation Code completely belie that. The presumption is always one of guilt over innocence under those statutes. What about this lie that you've, uh, it's a privilege to drive and you've got to take the tracker chip in your car, you've got to have the license, you've got to have the registration, you've got to learn how to lick boots? This is where we get into the actual study of law and the difference in terminology. Uh, you have to be very particular in the terminology you use in the fact that when the law defines a word, term, or phrase, it is an absolute certainty that word, term, or phrase is not being used in the common English sense. So it has. You got to go to blacks. Well, to bla it depends. 
the Supreme Court begins with Bouvier's, and if the term is not defined in Bouvier's 1856 edition, then they will rely on blacks. The states rely almost exclusively on blacks' law. But normally, if the statute defines the term, that definition is what controls over blacks or over anything else. Uh, second to that, if the term is not defined, you can go to blacks, and if it's not defined in blacks, then you can go to case law. Then if it's not defined in case law, you can go to the standard English dictionary. Those are basically the hierarchies you have to follow to determine whether or not a word or phrase And notice in law, it's always the older is the more powerful. You look at all this new crud they just make up, it's just stuff to confuse the cops and magistrates so they'll carry out the fraud. It's a hoax. Like Rick Perry saying, it's the law, you got to take Gardasil. And people finally went, there is no law. What? And he said, yeah, there is. I said so. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's just right. flim flam. It, it very much is. And so in reference to your question, when you use the term drive, when you're that, driving... That brings in commercial. Correct. It's the right to locomotion or travel. Correct. When you use that term, then what you asked me in the question, yes, you must submit. You must submit because... That's why I you said drive, agree. because I wanted exactly. to point out, that, well, oh, it's a privilege to drive. Well, you know what? We, under common law, have said under commerce, driving this locomotive or this big whatever, we've decided that, yes, that can be regulated because it's commerce. Well, not only commerce, but the commerce itself has to present an inherent public danger or interest that they can regulate. For instance, let's take these trucking companies, especially the ones coming out of Mexico. They're neither safety inspected, nor are they properly maintained, so on and so forth. You've got an 80,000 pound plus missile running down the highway at 85 miles an hour that may blow tires at any time, blow an engine at any and time. And so that's how it was allowed in. Uh also so it can be taxed because the trucks are tearing up the roads, correct. then they simply move that on to the general public. That's correct. The laws were taken and reinterpreted without actually being changed, by the way. The law has not changed. Only the way it's being applied has been changed. They have taken these words and phrases with these common meanings and they have readjusted them to cover an area they were never meant to cover. And you only find this out when you go back and do a historical study of all the previous versions. Sure, I mean, it's, it's one of the most adjudicated issues that I've seen, yes, the, that the right to travel, the right to mobility. And it's not just here, it's across cultures. Even in really you know, tyrannical systems, that's got to be a basic right. Or, or it, it, you're living in a huge prison. That's true. And uh, the first Transportation Act of any kind in Texas was originally enacted in 1917. When you start with that act and you move forward, let's consider that the automobile, automobile came along in the late 1800s. So from there up until 1917, there was no regulation on automobiles of any kind in Texas. Now, if you're an owner of an automobile at that time and the state turns around and writes a law that says you can no longer use your automobile without our consent, that runs afoul of the constitutional right to own and use property. All right, you purchased it, it belongs to you. Now the state's telling you that unless you get their permission, you can't even use it. There's nothing correct and right about well, that. Well, the power to tax is the power to destroy. George Washington realized corporations, companies in England didn't like the competition. They were putting regulations and taxes in and admitting it was meant to shut down their competition. I mean, I heard Jack Abramoff, uh, the famous corrupt uh, convicted lobbyist on MSNBC last night when I was driving home at about 10.30, they were re-airing it. And he said, listen, I'm doing what everybody else does, but yes, it's criminal. But he said, I'm pa I was paid every day, hundreds of millions of dollars overall, to go lobby government to shut down corporations' competition. Right. I mean, th and the general public, you tell them this, and they think, oh, that's not happening. No, it's, it's very, very simple. And Google's been lobbying that humans don't even be able to drive cars. They've already got a bunch of states letting them drive robot cars everywhere. And, and they're going to argue they're safer and then try to force us to then drive in their cars. They're just destroying our freedom and rendering us slaves to them by having government come out with an unconstitutional edict. Right. And think about that kind of thing with the robot cars. How does that work when it has to travel long distances between cities and so on and so forth? The entire purpose of this system, the way it's been implemented now, is to go from its original intent of regulating commerce that could be a public hazard, and so they're there to protect the public from that commerce and what it could entail, and they've taken it and shifted over into a way to control the general population. If you want to use the road, come get a license from us. If you want to use your car, come get it registered and licensed by us. 
Now that you have our license, we can revoke it on a whim. You can no longer use your car. A license turns a right into a privilege. Correct. Now, let me stop because we're out of time. I'll have you back for more extensive report in the future. You can even bring some slides if you'd like. We can sit here and demonstrate it for people because I know your research is right on. There's a lot of pro se people out there that put out a lot of disinformation, most of it through ignorance. It's not intentional, but I've, I've done the basic research. I know your information's spot on. We'll definitely have you back. I want you to spend about 60 seconds talking about the police themselves uh, and their duty versus how many of them are actually consciously thugs versus just being manipulated like the general public. And then also tell us about uh, the rule of law uh, radio show and website. All right. Uh, I honestly believe that the majority of police officers have good intentions in what they do. They are there to serve the public. And I talk to many of them in every capacity, federal, state, local, you name it. Uh, most of them are interested in knowing the truth, though they don't really know what they could do with it even if they learned it. Basically, they don't want to be the lone individual in the shark-infested waters. That's the major problem for most of them. Yeah, they wake up, but how do we put it into place? It's a personal choice, guys. That's really all there is to it. You must make the choice to stand up for what you know is right. I, as an individual citizen, had to do it. You gentlemen have to do it. You're the only ones that can. Uh, I honestly believe the more we spend time communicating with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis, the public versus the law enforcement, they will stop seeing us the way they're being trained to see us, which is as the enemy, as the potential perp, as the potential criminal. We have to get them back into the public swell rather than just this educated law enforcement swell where they remain isolated from us and kept at a distance. That's one thing. Uh, we do have a Monday night show that's all about traffic on ruleoflawradio.com. You can listen to us over the Internet no matter where you are just by going to the website. Uh, I talk about traffic issues, Texas law, uh, due process, everything related to the fighting of any type of traffic citation, city ordinance violation, so on and so forth. Uh, it's just, it's numerous things we try to cover, and our job as we see it is like you to take the overall picture, put it together in a way that people can understand, and help them along the steps. Exactly. Well, Eddie, you're doing great work. I'm tired of watching folks flounder around. The Bible says the people perish for lack of knowledge, and you're bringing a lot of knowledge. People can also find on that website about your uh, local seminars you put on every weekend at Brave New Books in downtown Austin. I'd, I'd like to come down sometime and film it and put it on prisonplanet.tv. I think that's a good... Well, I might send McBreen down there then soon to, to, to tape one of those and put it out on the web uh, because it's it, it's very important, and we're here to bring light to the world. Eddie Craig, thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate it. Well, I want to thank the crew, and I want to thank all of you, the supporters of PrisonPlanet.tv, uh, my radio show, the news websites, InfoWars.com. This is all about giving Ron Paul a platform. He said four years ago he got half his support in his first presidential run from this show. Uh, it's about bringing on Eddie Craig. It's about bringing on... So many countless other people bringing different knowledge at different angles uh, as we try to expose the corruption. I mean, for a while, they ate around the Bill of Rights and Constitution's edges. And now they're attacking the very core of it, going, yeah, we'll just spy on you without warrants. Yeah, we're going to arrest you if you videotape us in public, but we're going we're gonna to videotape you in your house. Yeah, we're going to set up warrantless checkpoints on the highways. I mean, this is martial law. This, this isn't just a country having its basic liberties overthrown. This is, this is a dangerous, fast-moving cancer. And uh, to all the people that serve this system out of ignorance, out of peer pressure, or out of actual evil uh, intent, you, you can't make a deal with this system. It is predatory. It is a black hole. It is destructive. Uh, you've got to figure out that it, it's, it's better statistically, plus you'll feel better just in your heart and soul, to stand against evil. A lot of us work really hard to bring this information to the public, and we've had huge success. So we invite you to research, become more informed, and then start reaching out to others. Every person you wake up or even get to think a little bit and turn one degree from tyranny and ignorance towards liberty is a huge tectonic victory that the globalists feel. That's why they're moving so fast right now is because they know the sleeping giant that is for humanity is rising. Lord willem, we'll see you back tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central. Uh, for the uh, next edition of InfoWars Nightly News. And, of course, we'll see you on the radio slash TV show, 11 to 2 Central, also at PrisonPlanet.tv, but on the audio streams and local AM and FMs. Don't forget, this ends at the end of the month, 15-day free trial for subscribers to see all the films, my book, Paul Watson's book, 
expanded extras, the, the show every night, the archives of it all, the special reports are incredible, the Charlotte Israby Skull and Bones one, they're all up there right now at prisonplanet.tv or infowarsnews.com. Again, great job to the crew. We'll see you back here tomorrow night.